Jesus Christ. Amen. The words for our consideration, again, words taken from Exodus chapter 1. Permit me to reread verses 15 and 16. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Pua, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. Dear fellow Christians, ever been in that situation where you're wrestling between taking this road or that road or making this decision or that decision, trying to weigh out the pros and the cons and not really sure if either of the decisions you can make or have to make are really going to make life any bit better. To be fair, I'm not talking about having to wrestle between taking the Powerball jackpot winning in all one lump sum payment or a bunch of payments spread out over time. When we're talking about living as Christians, you and I often find ourselves in places that other people won't. Because there are times when you and I as Christians are wrestling with making a decision and it's not that we don't know what's right it's that we're wrestling between making the right choice or weighing out how difficult it's going to be to live with the consequences of doing what is right. When we encounter those types of situations, that's what I call a Christian caught in conflict. I would certainly qualify the situation that faced those Hebrew midwives as Christians caught in conflict. Moses shares a little bit of a background with us to bring us up to speed for how they got into this situation anyway. If you remember with me, it was Joseph as a young boy and that coat of many colors that made him the envy of all of his brothers and the despised one by all of his brothers, so much so that they sold him into slavery. And then they made up a story and told dad that he had been killed by a wild animal. It was during his time in slavery, though, that through difficulties and challenges, but ultimately through God's guidance and hand of blessing, that Joseph went from being a slave to the second in command and savior of Egypt. After all, it was God who permitted him to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh that there would be seven good years and then seven lean years. And it was Joseph who devised a plan to save the nation from starvation. And it was after all of this that Joseph and the rest of his family was reunited. And they were welcomed as honored guests to live in Egypt. But as generations passed and as Joseph passed, so also did the memory and all of the glory for the things that he had done. Now there was a new king in town, and he didn't care about what Joseph had done. In fact, now, instead of being honored guests, they were unwanted nuisance, this nation of Israel. They were growing and growing and growing, and the king devised a plan. The first plan was to make them slaves, to force them to work hard, so hard that they would be worked into exhaustion and possibly even death. That would stop them from growing and expanding. But Moses says the more they were oppressed, the more God blessed them. So time for plan B. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Shifra and Pua, when you are helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. Can you imagine being in that situation? It's your job to be there to help women in such a critical moment. To help them welcome the birth of a child and 
experience the joy of life, and now you're, be, you're being commanded to be the bearer of death for any boys that are born. What would you do? Just stop helping? Would you obey the king and then take part in murder? Or would you disobey the king and then be ready possibly to lose your life because of your disobedience? What would you do? You know, the reality is it's not just these two women that found themselves caught in conflict. We have brothers and sisters all over the world that are caught in conflict. Some that are wrestling and weighing out whether or not they're willing to undergo punishment or imprisonment for gathering together for worship because the message might be seen as one that's going to incite a rebellion. We have brothers and sisters that are meeting in secret because where they live, even to gather for worship, is illegal. So what do you do? Stop worshiping altogether? Change the message? Or do you defy the law of the land and then be ready to bear whatever consequences might follow? I think it's difficult for us to imagine being put in such a situation and probably even more intimidating to even think what we would do if we were in them. And you know, it's not always because we don't know what the right answer is. Oftentimes it's because we know what God's will is and that in following God's will we know that the consequences might be rather steep for doing what is right. And you know why that is? Because what God's will is and what God's word says is in conflict. It clashes with the way the world and our sinful nature thinks and operates. You know how that works, right? The only way to move up, the only way to get a promotion is if you're willing to sacrifice your stance on being a person of integrity or if you're asked to do something unethical. But it's either that or you can't have the job, you can't have the promotion. We are convinced that God brought this world into existence in six 24-hour days. But to profess that, to stand on that truth, might get you laughed out and flunked out of a classroom. So what do you do? We know what God's Word says about sexuality in marriage. And yet there are classrooms all around us in which children are being taught views that are contrary to God's Word. They're being encouraged to do things that are in conflict with God's will for our lives. See, it's not just Christians all over the world. It's Christians gathered here this morning that can very easily and quickly be caught in conflict. And what do you do? How do you respond? It's not that we don't know what the right answer is sometimes. But it's that wrestle with being willing to deal with the consequences of doing what's right. Dear friends, just as much as conflict is bound to be a part of our lives as Christians, so also is God's direction, God's strength, God's help and God's guidance when we find ourselves in those situations. Throughout Scripture, God shares examples with us of Christians who faced extreme circumstances. There's a common thread that links them together. Why is it 
that one man was willing to be thrown into a den of hungry lions rather than obey a king's command? Why is it that three men were willing to be thrown into a fiery furnace and burned alive because they were unwilling to bow down to an idol? Why is it that two women were unwilling to obey a king's command? It's because they all feared the Lord. It's because they staked their lives on the fact that the God who had called them to faith in him would be the one that would uphold them, would strengthen them, would see them through whatever consequences might follow. Because no matter what the law of the land was, they know and they knew the king of kings, the one who controls all things. See, when we're faced with conflict, we're going to find our help in God's word. After all, God's word is a light for our, a light for our path and a lamp for our feet. It's in God's word that we draw our strength. It's in God's word that we are given direction and encouragement. Yes, it's in God's word that we are given principles by which we can live our lives and make decisions. I'd like to share a few of them with you this morning. When we're faced and caught in conflict, these are principles God shares with us. We must obey him rather than men. That's what the Hebrew midwives did. They feared God and obeyed God, even though the king's command told them to take the lives of baby boys. Just because something is legal doesn't mean that it's right. The king legalized abortion, but they said, this isn't right. This goes against God's will and God's word, and they refused to do it. Remember that following and fearing the Lord may come with unwanted consequences, but those who do so will always find themselves blessed by God. And lastly, if you're a parent, you have the right and the responsibility to be engaged and involved in your children's education and what they're being taught. That might mean having hard conversations and making difficult decisions. We're going to be caught in conflict from time to time. That much is sure because we bear the name of our Savior Jesus. But the other thing that is absolutely certain is that we will never be caught in conflict alone. No, God will always be there with us. That's the same God that Daniel trusted in. The God who rescued him from the mouths of those hungry lions, who closed the mouths of those lions. That's the same God that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego put their faith and trust in. The God who miraculously saved them from that fire. That's the same God whom those midwives put their faith and trust in. The God who blessed them because they feared him and they obeyed him above all else. That's the same God who gave his one and only son to forgive us. The same son who gave up his life and that in giving up his life saved ours and has given them infinite value and worth. The same God who has power over all things. The power to help and the desire to help us in any and every conflict we might face. If only all of our decisions were easy ones, but they're not. Some are going to challenge us. 
But may it be said of us, as it was said of those midwives, that they feared God. And in the midst of conflict, dear Christian friends, let us go to our source of strength, to God in his word. Ask him to give us strength to stand on his word. No matter what the consequences may follow. And may we give thanks and rejoice that we face the conflicts bearing his name. We ask it all in Jesus' name and we pray. Gracious Lord, throughout our walk of faith, we are faced at times with choices between upholding your will and doing what is easy or welcome by the world around us. In those moments, give us a peace of heart and mind. Fill us with your promises and protection and help and uphold us in the midst of the conflict. Send us out in your strength and draw us daily to your word for our comfort and encouragement that we live boldly as your children. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please stand. We now